What's up, everybody? So earlier when I said, uh, when I spoke about the media trucks, I actually tweeted, hey, if somebody's down there on Wall Street, if you see a whole bunch of media trucks, will you please post a picture? And, and a guy said, crickets, nothing going on down here. So no media trucks. So it just shows you that when the market goes down, that catches a lot of people's attention. I mean, we'll have stories about this 20,000, no doubt. Uh, but they're not sending media trucks down to Wall Street to go out and talk to people as they do when the market crashes. So anyway, take that for what it's worth. We will see tonight in the uh, American Association of Individual Investors weekly survey. That thing comes out every Wednesday. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the bullish sentiment has popped way back up again. And that thing, other than last week, by the way, the bullish sentiment has been uh, highly elevated, well above its historical average, all the way since mid-November. It was only last week, for the first week, that it dipped down below. And we had that little mini sell-off in the market. It looked like 20000 wasn't going to make it, so people got a little bit bearish. But it's really about the flows, and you know, I've, I've seen the flows turn around. Uh, I'd say right now the flows are sustainable, uh, positive year over year. Not by a lot. I mean, we're only talking about, you know, maybe 1% uh, growth above last year. Uh, but still, it's positive. I mean, you got to respect those flows. Every position is a good position. I said that before. For those of you who are in SDS and you're sweating it out, Look, every position, we've all been through this. I'm sure many of you have had the experience of being in a good position and mismanaging that, blowing it, you know, getting out too soon or taking a little loss because you got nervous. It went against you for, you know, a day or two. You got out and then it goes the way it should go big time. You know, you blew it. You mismanaged it. That was a good position. And you could have a bad position that is maybe one that is against the fundamentals, uh, but that could end up making money for you too. You got to be able to manage it. And again, that comes down to managing yourself. And it's all about that mental game. Some people ask me if I use options. I do not use options. The problem with options is that you pay for time. Okay, I use time. I have all the time in the world. So uh, especially buying options, I just think that's, you know, to me, that's a pure speculation. That's like, that's like a gamble. Options in the past, early on in my career, I used to, you know, play around in options a little bit. I was mostly a seller of options. I would write options and collect that premium. So that's that's kind of a way of, of taking that time value. Uh, but again, they expire. You could be in a position. And by the way, that's the same thing with futures. I mean, I've been a futures trader my whole entire career. That's why I like Forex. You're not dealing with expiration. And, and by the way, that's why I like common stocks. Common stocks are fantastic. Uh, and on that note, and I mentioned this in the last video, if you are a value investor, as I am, it's very, very difficult to find uh, attractive stocks right now. You know, stocks of good value. This is a momentum game going on here. I spoke about Trump. You know, basically the only one real policy move he's made so far was that um, freeze on federal hiring. And, you know, that's not a big thing, but that is, you know, that, that's a drag. That's a fiscal drag. Um, and today he talked about cutting off funding, federal funding to the so-called sanctuary cities, cities like Chicago, cities like San Francisco, cities like New York, where I am here, that allow uh, undocumented aliens and uh, support them financially, basically, those cities receive federal funding, not just for that, but for a broad range of things. And he talked about cuts there. So again, it's this whole aspect of cuts. But, you know, we got to be fair on the picture. He is talking about stimulus. That part, you know, we, we, we simply don't know. And I spoke earlier about people, you know, getting frustrated and, and um, confused, right? Confused is another way to say you are impatient. If you are confused, it's because we don't have enough information. And the information comes to us, but it comes to us, you know, in its own time. We cannot get the information when it's not available to us yet. We don't know. For example, we don't know what Trump's stimulus is going to be. He's talking about it. We don't know. We have to wait. 
There's only a few things we do know, and that has not been stimulative. Uh, so that's it. I mean, we'll see what happens with the AAII survey tonight. Um, I recommended buying some GDX. The, goal, the, the whole inflation theme is still on track, by the way. That's still on track. It has not gone away because the market has gone above 20000 And I mentioned... If you want to, you know, put things in perspective or, or look at this from a historical perspective, in 1972, the Dow broke above 1,000 for the very first time ever. That was a huge, momentous, you know, achievement at that time. Following that, it took nine years because it went up and then it came back down under 1,000. It took nine years to regain the 1,000 mark. And then even after that, it took another year for it to really break back above because, you know, in 1981, it went back above, but then it came back down again. It was only until 1982 that it got above and stayed above. I'm not saying that's going to be the same thing that's going to happen with 20,000, but there's a lot of similarities I see now between uh, the current environment and the 70s, especially with the inflation aspect. And finally, just to reiterate what I said earlier about the futures curve, if you look at the S&P futures curve, it's in backwardation, all right? It's inverted. In other words, uh, the cash S&P index is above the deferred futures contracts. Why would that be? A normal curve is positively slow because it, it reflects future earnings growth, future dividends, right? So you got an inversion of the curve. It is correctly, I think, reflecting an inflationary environment. Uh, not that investors understand that right now today, but that's all I'm saying. All right. I mean, these market structures can tell you a lot. There's a lot of talk about information. There's a lot of information in that. I explained about currencies and, and rate uh, increases, and you could see the curve, the dollars curve or, or the curve of other currencies, um, where the dollar is essentially, you look out and uh, you got that same sort of inversion. All right, everybody. I'll see you later. We'll see what happens. Bye-bye.